This video contains a very frank discussion of cannibalism. I do my best to keep it non-gory and to be very respectful of the situation. However, if this is not a subject that you are comfortable discussing, this is probably not the video for you. I told myself I wasn't going to do this, but I wasn't going to talk about it. But then I did talk about it with my family and my friends and my coworkers, and I have talked about it with everyone except for you, internet. So this week, we are talking about cannibalism. But first, we're going to talk about a slightly different kind of cannibalism, that of locusts. Remember those Google Science Fair hangout on airs I told you I was participating in? Well, I was on one a couple weeks back with Dr. Ian Cousin, who studies swarms and swarming behavior. And so one of the things that he talked about, and I'm going to put a link in the doobly-doo because he talks about it so much better than I ever will be able to, is cannibalism among locusts in swarms. So, if you are a hungry, hungry locust and there is no food around, you're going to realize that a really great food source is that locust sitting right in front of you. I mean, it has all of the locusty proteins and nutrients that you need, so why don't you just eat that locust? So now let's say that you're a locust. Well, <laughs> you're going to try and eat that locust in front of you, but you're also going to be running away from the locust behind you. And so you end up with all these locusts moving in the same direction because they're all trying to eat each other. Wow, okay, not what I thought locust storms were, but you know, it's part of it. So we talked about locust swarms, we talked about how we can look at human swarms and other swarms and all sorts of behavior. So the link is in the doobly-doo and you should go watch that hangout because it was super interesting and Dr. Cousin talked about all sorts of swarms and how they can affect us and how they can be used for modeling and also architecture inspired by the humans who will inhabit those spaces and I thought it was a super cool hangout and he does a much better job of the locust swarm explaining than I ever will. So for that you should check out the link down below. So after spending a lot of time recently thinking about cannibalism because of that discussion, up in the news popped this story about cannibalism at Jamestown, one of the early American settlements. So by the winter of 1609, Jamestown was suffering really badly. Their supply ship had been lost at sea, there had been a terrible drought, there was famine, and people were starving to death. They resorted to eating their horses, dogs, cats, vermin, anything they could find. There were even reports of people having eaten shoe leather just to try and get something into their bodies. But in this extreme time, even that wasn't enough. And George Percy, the president of Jamestown at this time, wrote that in need of some sort of sustenance, people were even resorting to exhuming bodies of the recently deceased and eating them. But until recently, there had been no physical evidence of this. But this past week, it was reported that the remains of a 14-year-old girl who appeared to have been cannibalized were found. While excavating the remains of a trash pit which held the bones of other animals clearly butchered for food, they began to find the remains of a human skeleton as well. They found some teeth and some skull fragments. And the science that they did here is actually kind of cool. They took CT scans of these fragments and then they used 3D models to reconstruct not only the skull but also a rendering of the girl herself. The Smithsonian reports that they also did an isotope analysis on her bone fragments and found that she had eaten a high protein diet, meaning that she was likely the daughter of a wealthy gentleman. The scientists found lacerations to her face and jaw bones, as well as four large blows to the back of the skull and a sort of puncture into her temple, which was probably used in addition to these large blows to pry her skull open. Now, at the time, eating the facial tissue and brain of animals was not that uncommon, and so it was pretty clear to the scientists that these sort of markings on her face and on the rest of her skull were indicative of cannibalism, that the flesh had been removed along with the brain for consumption. The researchers noted that all of the lacerations and blows to the skull were probably done by someone who was unskilled and untrained in butchery. They were not expert marks, it took them multiple tries to get into the back of the skull. They didn't really know what they were doing. However, they did find uh, dissimilar marks on the shins that looked a little bit more experienced, and so they think that there were multiple people who may have removed this girl's flesh for consumption. Now the researchers note that they don't believe that this girl had been murdered to be eaten. They believe that she had probably already died and probably already been buried as well and then was dug up to be consumed. There wasn't really sort of a blow that looked like it would have killed her. Uh, the ones made on her skull looked like they had been done after she had died uh, because they were sort of close together. I I'm sorry for being a bit frank here, but it didn't look like she was struggling. It looked like, you know, she wasn't moving around. Now our initial reaction to this has to be horror. Cannibalism is such a huge taboo in our modern culture, but you have to remember that these people were literally starving to death. People were dying, they were down to eating anything that they could possibly consume. These were awful, horrible, just terrible, terrible times in this colony. And 
while I wasn't there, I can be pretty sure that none of these people wanted to eat other people. This was not their first option. This was indeed their last option. This is not to say, however, that some of the colonists did not choose a more grisly version of this option. George Percy also wrote of a man who, I'm sorry, but killed, salted, and consumed his pregnant wife. Percy wrote that he had this man tortured and then executed. Based on these sorts of written accounts, scientists do not think that this 14-year-old girl, who they have named Jane, was the only one consumed during this time period. And while it is probably a harsh reality to face, it is another part of the history of that area. Is it a fun part of the history? No. But I think that it's an interesting way to look at how science helps us look at history as well. Archaeologists were able to find these bones and then study them not only visually, but also with CT scans, with modern computer modeling, with isotope analysis so that they could figure out what this girl had been eating. And I think that's really cool. I think that science is allowing us to see a very different picture of history. And that, I think, was worth a video. Go forth, do science.